you see it. Amen. Man, I tell you, if I can just get down to the church, if I wasn't already a member of the past, I think I would join today. Long before the pastor even preached. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. The, the Lord said, I inhabit the praise of my people. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. Amen. For all the cattle on a thousand hill belong to me. But what do you want from us? God said, all I want from you is your praise. Come on, somebody. I don't, I, don't, I don't want anything else. It's enough of me for you just to tell me thank you. Thank me when you get up in the morning. Thank me before you lay down at night. Thank me in the noonday. Just thank me. That, that's enough for me. And if you just learn how to thank me, come on, somebody. Oh, y'all, y'all missing this. If we learn how to praise God and thank him for what he's done, let me tell you something about me. And I hope y'all don't let my daughter hear this or my kids hear this. Because she's sitting right there, so don't y'all. So this is between y'all. So I'm hoping that she don't hear what I'm about to tell y'all. But every time my kids tell me that, Daddy, I appreciate you. When I see my kids appreciate what I do for them, I keep my hand on my wallet. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. When I hear my kids, come on somebody, when I hear my kids talking about how good their dad is, and you start talking about your dad and their kids, so let me tell you about my dad. I put my hand on my wallet. I dare you to ask me for something right now. See, if we learn how to praise God and, and boast about God and tell people about how good your God is, come on. God will put his hands on his wallet and say, I dare you to ask me for something. Come on, come on somebody. Let's give him a praise for just, a, just two seconds. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you want. But sometimes praise will get you through some stuff. Come on, give God a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. Y'all sit down now. We got, to, we got to fall in our Presbyterian mode. Me and I. And do you not know, in our 8 o'clock crowd, we have more older people in our 8 o'clock crowd. Do you not know them old folks were praising the Lord this morning too? Y'all ain't got nothing. Hey, amen, somebody. They were praising the Lord this morning. It's something about being in the... The Bible says in His presence there is fullness of joy. In His presence there is liberty. That when we're in the presence of God, He gives us the liberty. Amen. And the joy of just being in His presence. Amen. Every Bible is turned to the book of our St. John chapter 14. St. John chapter 14. I want to give thanks for those who are watching us via the internet. What a convenience it is that people get to go to church and never take off their jammies. Amen. I was, I was wondering, could I get away with just preaching from home with my... <laughs> I, I, I guess that's a no from y'all. Amen. But we want to do think those who are watching us, we are hearing that some of you have adopted this as your church and has adopted me as your pastor. So every Sunday they're telling us that you're tuning in to our services here on Sunday. Uh, the noise that you heard in here, you didn't get a chance probably to see all these people jumping around. But we enjoy the Lord here. So again... Thank you so much. It's for Hey Cousin up in Alabama. Thank y'all for showing up. Those in Minnesota and Wisconsin, we got some people up there watching every Sunday. We even got some people over in the Virgin Islands and out, in the, out there in, in the West Indies are watching our services. Amen. Let's give God a praise offering. Amen. That people get to worship us all these places. In John chapter 14, John chapter 14, John chapter 14. In the last few weeks, we've, we've been talking to you about collaboration and we're just simply talking about a people or a group of people learning how to work together for one common cause it's, it's, it's great dividends in knowing how to 
depend and work with other people. And can I tell you something? Everybody don't know everything. And not one person can do everything. I was our, a few years ago, Joyce and I had the privilege of taking on some of our, our nieces and nephews because of, for whatever reason, they had some issues. So Joyce and I had to take these kids in to keep them from going in the system. So we had to raise them for 18 months. And one day, I heard this loud ruckus going on in the kitchen. And one of the kids was screaming, Uncle Charles, Uncle Charles, they picking at me, they picking at me. And I came in and I wondered why they were picking him. And they all was tying their shoes and Reggie couldn't tie his shoes. And Reggie said, Uncle Charles, I told them that everybody don't know everything. <laughs> come on here, somebody, come on, come on. He was asking his brother and his sister to help him tie his shoes because he couldn't tie it. And I have never forgot that statement from a seven-year-old kid. They, amen. Wisdom come from the mouth. Amen. You know, it'll come from, from the mouth of sucklings. God will give you a word, and that word has never left me, that no one person know everything. But here in the text in St. John chapter 14, that was read in our hearing from Pastor Wolf. Jesus is talking to these disciples. As you all know, we preach from chapter 13 for about three weeks. We've been preaching four weeks, actually preaching from chapter 13. And in chapter 13, we've seen Jesus doing something that blew these disciples' mind. He took on the form of a servant. He was doing some things that a servant do. And it didn't seem right to the disciples that their Lord would be doing something like he did in chapter 13. But collaboration can never work. It can never work in any cause if whoever is collaborating on something can't agree that what they're doing is important. Come on, somebody. Until we, until we come to a place where we feel that what we do for the Lord is important, then we're not going to collaborate. So I can I ask you something this morning before we get going? Can we agree? Can we agree this morning? that preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to people who are dying needs it. Let me tell you why. All of us know people that's living in this nation, living in this world. They're living up in some jacked up situations. Can we agree that this country need help? Come on, I'm going this side. Can, can we agree that it's been a long time since we've seen the country in the way that we've seen it now. It's been a long time since we've seen our very White House as divided or mixed up as we have seen it happen. Never have we seen that much of those many people who are in high places are falling and coming down because of those who are around, amen, and sitting in places of prominence and leadership. Amen. You and I are living in a time where I think and I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is about to come back. Amen. Come on, somebody. I believe that we're on the brink. We're on the brink of seeing the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why it's so important for us to agree that preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is absolutely very important. Amen. Because there are people that you and I know that are going to die and go to hell without Christ. We're sitting up in church and you are here today and I, and I applaud you for being here. But there are people that you pass by and people that you've seen this weekend, people that you're going to see on your jobs and people that you go to school with that don't know the Lord at all. The last couple of, couple of days, weekend, I've, I've been sitting and being around people who are on the brink of death and thinking that I'm just going to die and that's going to be it. But can I tell you, when you're dead, you ain't done. Come on here, somebody. When you're dead, you ain't done. And, and, and you got people who don't even know what's, what's going to happen on the other side of death. 
They think if I die, it's going to alleviate me from all my pain and all of my problems on this side. But little do they know, we're going to only live on this side for only 40, maybe 50, 60 years. Amen. And the Bible says by reason of strength, we get to live 80. Come on, somebody. But on the other side, when you leave this body, you're going to live eternally for the rest of your life. Let me tell you something. You, you are not just some anything. You are an eternal being, which means that you're going to live forever somewhere. You are a, listen, listen. You are a spiritual being living in a physical body. Can I tell you something? Normally, I preach from this scripture when I'm preaching funerals. And I don't know why God is leading me here today, but I want you all to say something like I say at funerals. I want you all to look at my hands. Look at my arms. Look at my eyes. Look at my mouth. You hearing something coming out of my voice. If I died, all these facts, all these components of me will be right here. But that which made it move, where did it go? Come on, somebody. Where, where did it go? Where did it go? That's, this is why that we want people to understand that talking and praising, and praising the Lord Jesus Christ is not just something we do. We don't come to church to entertain you. This is not some social club. We come to tell you that you need to know the Lord Jesus Christ, that in the event that you die and leave this body, amen, because all it is is a body. You live in that body. No one has really seen what you really look like. All we've ever seen is what you live in in this body. You're in a house. In fact, amen, somebody, you are totally, and you could be completely different than what you look at in the house you're saying. You and I are one day going to leave. This. I don't know why I'm going here, but I need to be here. Because here on the brink of Jesus is about to die. He's about to leave these disciples. And now they were about to, but about to lose their mind because this Lord, this Christ of whom they have given themselves to. But, but, but I want to say this to you. This very important for us to collaborate on this effort. Many times we think we come to church so we can have a big church. We can boast about having a big church and having a lot of people. No, no, no. That's not why we come. We're coming here that when you are prepared and we, we have preached and taught you the Word of God, that you can leave this place, go in the workplace, that you can go home, you can talk with people that who I won't ever get a chance to speak to and tell them about the saving grace of God. You can talk to people who are on their dying bed that they can live and they're going to live. I told a young man who was about to die, I asked him, I said, do you not know that if you die, are, are, you, are you sure that you're going to go to heaven? And he couldn't tell me whether or not he was sure or not. And in fact, there are some people don't believe this stuff. They don't believe that, that after they die that something else is going to wake them on the other side. But believe it or not, two seconds after you leave this body, you're going to find out that what I'm talking about is true. But here's the thing is that if you die, you're not going to go to heaven based on how much you dance in the church. You're not going to go to heaven based on your... I mean, membership in a Baptist church or Presbyterian or Holy Spirit, you're going to go to heaven based on one thing. You're not going to do enough good to get you into heaven. I don't know why the, you believe that lie because the devil has told people that if you live good enough and your good outweigh your bad, you're going to go to heaven. But that's a lie from hell. Amen, somebody. You're not going to go to heaven based on how good you are or your church membership. You're going to go to heaven based on one thing. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth and the life. No man come to the Father but by. He said, I'm the way. So if you want to find out how to get to heaven, I'm that way. If you want to know what truth is, I'm the truth. If you want to know where life comes from, I give life. There is no person in this room that is living today that God did not give you life. We are talking about not just some man from Galilee, not just some figure from, from, from our history. We're talking about the Son of God who created all things for himself and by himself. Amen. He is God Almighty. Well, well, Pastor Joe, why in the world are you going here? Because these disciples was looking at Jesus as the coming Messiah. All they was wrapped up in is having an earthly kingdom, and that's, that was their main concern. He, they did not understand that he wasn't saving them so they could just save Israel. He was saving them that he might be the evangelist for the whole world. 
here in Antioch, here in Antioch, somebody say here in Antioch. So Thompson a few weeks ago talked about collaboration, and, and I, I need to talk about this because sometimes people think that this is just some joke, kid. This is no joke. Girl, are you hearing me, man? Are you hearing me this morning? And, and I, I've been spending all this week, and I've got a chance to just spend time with God. You know, I, out, out in my house where I have no, mostly, I have a lot of seclusion out there at my house, and, and my wife wasn't around. I got a chance to talk, talk with God because too often we got people that think this is a joke. This, this is no joke. Amen, somebody. You can be out there. Please don't you get caught in a place where you ought not to be. Please, please, when you come to church, don't come here for religious reasons. You come here because you come in to, so, so you can be prepared to tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why we preach. This is why. You see all these songs that was being played. About, do you see people dancing around here because they've done this because they're in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Because there's some things that happen in your life. You can't, I mean, there's nobody can make you get through some stuff but knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. I got two people that know about that. You know, there's some things that I've gone through. There's some things that I've dealt with. There's some things that I have to deal with. If I didn't know that Jesus was real, I would lose my mind. I would, uh, come, come on here, somebody. But being that I know that God has given me hope, it keeps me going when I don't want to go. It makes me smile when people try to make me cry because I know that I know that I know I know he's real. Look at John chapter 14 for a minute. John chapter 14. And then John chapter 13, Peter, he was talking with these men. And Peter, he's, he has to rebuke Peter because Peter was wrapped up in his pride. Peter was talking about, Lord, though all men leave, oh, Peter ain't going to go nowhere. Pete going to be here with you. See, Peter didn't understand that Jesus was not preparing them so they can be in some clique. Come on, somebody. He thought that we were God. Jesus was creating some clique and some was calling the way. But Jesus let them know that, no, what you're going to be a part of is more, is, is, is much broader than Jerusalem. It's much broader than Jews. It was going to be something. So, Peter, you're not in some group. I'm not trying here to form me some little, a, a little, a little party, a little tribe. No, I'm here to prepare you guys to preach to people that don't look like you, to preach to people that don't talk like you, people that you used to hate. I'm, as you preach, I'm telling you to love people that don't love you. Come on, somebody. This is totally revolutionized for God to tell somebody, to preach to somebody that they don't like. I hate it when God tell me to speak to people that I was hoping a car run over my son. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, love people. Come on, come on, somebody. Love people. Amen. That I've been waiting on God to do something to him. You remember Jonah? God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. He said, God, I'm going to Nineveh because you want me to preach to them sinners. And God, when I get there, I want you to bring fire with you to burn them up. God says, go preach to them. And, and if I go, go preach to them, Jonah. But when Jonah got there and started preaching, the message went wrong. It went south on him. He was hoping them sinners would turn their back on God and therefore get the judgment of God. But when he preached the powerful word of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when he preached that word, the whole city of Nineveh turned to God. And Jonah got mad and said, what's wrong with this picture? God, this ain't what I was looking for. I was hoping that you would kill these sinners because they killed us. The whole city repented. And came to God and Jonah went and had a pity party and went and sat under him a, a, a tree. And God said, Jonah, why are you sitting here? Most preachers will be glad when they get this type of response in a message. Most preachers will give their right arm to get a whole city to come. It's hard sometimes to get just two of y'all to agree that the word of God is good. My God, Jonah preached on a whole city of people came to the Lord. And Jonah went and sat on a, on a tree and, and wanted to die. He said, God, I knew. I, I knew you. I knew you. See, in our history, these Ninevites, these Ninevites, they were very cruel people. And historically, this was the most feared people in that day. They had slaughtered, they had enslaved the Jewish people that ingrained in Jonah's, ingrained in Jonah's personality. In his, everything, all the thing he was taught is to hate the Ninevites. Like some of us as a people, this is Africa. Come on, somebody. Can I go there? I'm already here. I'm already here. I'm already here. This month of February is called Black History Month. 
And some of us is just as precious as anybody else. All of our life we've been taught to hate them and because they did this to us and did that to us. But the gospel changes all of that. The love of God changes those attitudes in which you have been. Most time on Black History Month, we get the most emboldened. We get the most, most of the time, we become more prejudiced at that time. We start reading about the things that was done to us. And we take on the spirit of Jonah. God burn them up. But God says, no, I called you to love everybody. Black man and the white man. Jews and Gentiles, bond and free. He's a preacher to everybody. So this month in February. Oh, God, why you got me? I've got to preach. But this month in February. We want people to come to our church and never feel uncomfortable being here. And I told you before, I don't care if E.T. come here. He could be green with little tentacles all over him. If he come and start praising God of our praise and meal, I'm going to get right there with E.T. And, and put my finger up like E.T. say, amen somebody. I'm going to go home with you, E.T. Amen somebody. None of us sit on the table. None of us sit. And, and Jonah sat there and said, Lord, I want to die. I knew if they turn around, you wasn't going to do it. Amen. This word, this word in which I'm preaching, God, here Jesus was trying to get these men to see something that they weren't looking for. They was hoping that he was going to create a people that was going to rule and dominate everybody else. But in this gospel, this Lord Jesus Christ came to die not only for us, he came to die for all men. And therefore, we got to come in a collaborative effort that we might preach the gospel to everybody that will listen. Amen. You got some people and I got some people that are dying and going to hell and they think that they're going to be okay. Amen. Being saved don't mean that you got good church clothes on. I would hate for the Lord to catch you somewhere. And you lipping and popping. I mean, you popping it. Oh, you popping it. Oh, you popping it. I'm just talking. I ain't talking about nobody in this room. I'm just talking. But I hope, I hope the rapture don't happen and you popping it. Or you stink your leg. I just hope, I hope you don't get caught. I hope that when he come, when he come, he'll find you. He'll find faith in you. He'll find you somewhere, giving him praise. I hope he finds you like that. Oh, you pastors that may be listening to me via the internet, you got to stop preaching that a watered-down gospel, telling everybody going to be rich and everybody going to be healed and everybody. You are loving for God. In this world, we're going to suffer persecution. In, now, in this world, we're going to go to hell sometime. But that does not change the joy of knowing that we still win. In death, we win. In sickness, we win. In poverty, we win. We win in a way because we're more than conquerors through Christ. Can, can, can death, can life, can any other creature separate me from the love of God? None of them can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Hmm. I really got some notes. But God is good. Sitting, sitting by some loved ones and seeing them about to go to eternity. Yes. Amen, somebody. Talking to pastors this weekend and for some reason God keep leading me to hurting pastors and church leaders and seeing people. My heart goes out and I hope Antioch become a place by which God can do something so spectacular. Yes. That you see all these pews here that we ought not to be satisfied with any empty, with, with none of these empty pews. You ought to try to bring somebody. If you can't preach, let me preach to them. I'm about done, y'all. I want y'all to know. I want y'all to know I, I do have some notes. But in my house last night, amen, somebody I laid there. My wife came home late and she got a slow cooker. And she put oxtails in them. <laughs> 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 
And that woman turned them things on, and they was cooking all night long. And I'm laying there in my bed, and I couldn't sleep. I said, babe, I said, uh, I can't sleep. <laughs> and I wasn't having no sexual, well, I, mean, I ain't talking about all that stuff either. Them oxtails were serenading me. They were, they were, I went. <laughs> but God is good, Joel. I want you to know God is good. And just like those oxtails were ser- come on somebody, were serenading me, we must live in such a life that the fragrance of God on our life are influence the people around us. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had two people that know that when you come around, the fragrance from your life is contagious. Somebody tell me, I want to know more about this man, Jesus. Why in the world are you excited about Jesus like that? Can I get some people in this room that you get so excited about the Lord Jesus Christ that every time you open your mouth, every time you open, you can't help but talk about him. You can't help but tell people about the goodness of the Lord. You know, that's why I was afraid. I was afraid. I, I was telling people uh, they was asking me to do, uh, you know, it was asking me to come to uh, uh, some kind of event in the city of the county, and they wanted me to do the prayer but leave Jesus' name out of it. They said, listen, you, we want you to pray. We want you to be a part of this, but, but, but pastor, here's what we need you to do. Here's the instructions here. We want you to pray, but when you get through praying like you preachers normally do, please do not attach. Don't say, in the name of Jesus, because you may offend some people. But how can I, how can I, how can I not talk about him who pulled me off the streets? Come on, somebody. How can, I, now, how can I forget him who brought me out of darkness and, 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 and put me in his mother? How can I tell him? How can I not mention him? Come on, somebody. If, if you love God, there's no way. If you can keep quiet. How can I not tell people that it was him who has given me this hope? Not only hope in living, but give me hope when I die. Um, 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 but I, 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 I gotta, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get all this. I know sometimes, you know, we get this thing, but, but I tell you, collaboration among any people is impossible if the collaboration is infiltrated by a person in the group that's full of pride. Peter said, Lord, you ain't gonna never wash my feet. Come on, somebody. In this place, man, I'm talking to you, brother. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, sister. Maybe somebody in this room right now. You might not be here next week. I don't know who I'm talking to in this room, but the Holy Ghost is saying some of you, you might not be, but something might happen next week that even might change your whole life. And too often we we leave people wondering about, you know, wondering about, you know, hey, I, I got it going on. You ain't got it going on, bro. Things can change like this. Look up in D.C. Look up. You know, they are predicting that the market is going to crash there. Right now, we're living in Eden, so to speak. We're, things are doing good right now, but they're predicting even that something is on the horizon. is going to rock this nation, not only the nation, but the whole world. And we're acting like everything is going to be hunky-dory. We got to, come on, somebody. We got to, we got to prepare ourselves in, in an event. And right now, we pull away, and I'm, I'm going to leave this alone. We pull, our country is pulling away from a treaty we have with Russia. And Russia and, 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 and China right now is becoming real buddy-buddy with one another. And they come on somebody, that, have you noticed they're kind of warming up to one another? The Bible talks about a time, amen, in the last days, the last, the last days, and he talks about events that's going to happen in the last day. He talks about Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog in the Scripture, those are places like Russia and China. They are going to get in a league with one another. They are talking about who in in this treaty can have the right to have a preemptive attack on somebody else. And with these nations are, lo- are getting together now, we're still in America not knowing what's going on. Also, the Bible talks about there's going to be a mark of Antichrist, a person is going to come on the scene who is satanically influenced. They're telling us now they're creating a chip right now in our, in our making. They've already created a chip where you can put it very small, you can stick it underneath your skin, very, very little problem putting it on your skin. And now you can take this chip like you do your, your, uh, your, your, your Apple card, name your, your, Apple, your Apple card, and you can hit that thing, or what they call e-pod, uh, will you be giving that name again? 
Ephod, 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 Ephod. Right now, they're already creating right now, and there are people, those companies right now, are creating this ship. So when people in that job can, can get this job, if you got that job, they can put it under your forehead, and you can just tap it, and you can get into the building and have access to various things. You can also buy it within the job. If they have something to eat, like a snack machine, you go there and hit your little, thi- your little, your little, eat, little thing on there, and you can get it. The Bible talks about 666, a number that when the people are going to be given that number. And that, that number, anybody that does not have that number can't buy or sell. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It? And right now the stage is being set right now. Do you not know that I believe the Middle East right now, I believe the Antichrist has already been born. Right now we're still trying to play church. Don't you know that the stage is being set? Israel is a time clock. Yo, I don't know why I'm, go- why I'm going here right now. The Bible is trying to get us to see it's time not for playing church, y'all. We got to do everything we can to get people into the kingdom. I got some loved ones, and you got some loved ones that don't know Christ, and we must preach him and preach him without compromise. We must tell them that there is no other name given among men whereby we must say, Jesus, they asked you, Thomas said, Jesus, how do we know the way? He said, Thomas, let me tell you something. I am the way. Come on here, somebody. I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Pastor Jones, I don't like that type of preaching. You make me sick. We were shouting and stancing a few minutes ago, and here you're now trying to make us think about we might die one day. Hello? If... You think that I'm joking. Please don't die. And if you think you can get to heaven without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, well, what about this Jesus? And I'm going to close on this note. What about this Jesus? Man has sinned against God. God's prized creation was us. We were the ultimate. We were the zenith of his creation. He was so in love with us that God says, you know, even though we sin, I got to find some way to redeem them. Do you not know Satan and Lucifer, the angels of God, amen, did not, when they fell from their position of heaven, there was not a plan of redemption made for them. They lost their first estate. But God loved us so much. We created in the image of God. God was trying to figure how in the world can I save those in whom I love? Then somebody said the only way you can save them because a man has sinned a man got to get them out to sin. So God, they, they, the Bible says they did a search. They were looking in the earth and under the earth and couldn't find nobody. But the Lamb of God come from on the altar of God and says, come on, for the volume of the book that was written of me, I come to do thy will, O God. Come on here, somebody, because there no man can do it. But Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, came down, squeezed himself in the body of a babe. 33 and a half long years. He kept himself housed in a little baby. He could have bust out and killed the world, but this baby in Mary's womb who sucked the breast of a peasant girl was a God of all, come on somebody, the God of all the universe. He said, now you're going to go, your son, son, if you go down to that earth, you mean to tell me they're going to they spit on you? They're going to lie on you? They're going to cheat on you? And they're going to say, You're not who they say you are. Jesus said, prepare me a body. And I'll go down and redeem them. Because of man. But he says, son, if you go down to redeem them, I want you to know that everything that a man is going to suffer, you're going to suffer. There will be times when you pray, going to look like I'm going to turn my back on you. The son said, I'll do it, Lord. Wait a minute, son. When they put you on that cross, you're going to die the cruelest death in which men can come up with. They're going to kill you. are going to die by crucifixion. I'm going to give you a picture of what they're going to let. Jesus said, I'm still going down. Come on here, somebody. I want you to know they're going to bury you in a borrowed tomb. He said, I still go down. But Father, you just tell me one thing. If I go down and die, would you raise me from the dead? Come on here, somebody. 
The Father said, if you go down and, and you take the volume of the book, because everything in this book, every man had violated. Every man in this book could not do this book. So Jesus said, in the volume of the book, I come to do thy will. I come to do everything that Charles messed up in this book. Every lie he told, I come to fix it. Every, every scripture that needs to be fulfilled, I'm going to walk right in it and will do everything there. Then, Father, I'm going to die. Then, Father, from this book, if you say I complete everything in this book, every sin they've ever done, if I do everything, if they look to me for salvation, would you give it? Amen. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you go down and don't, don't, don't back up, Jesus got to the Garden of Simony. And praise God, he began to pray, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass on me. He, he looking, he's looking at his father and said, wait a minute, it's getting real tough. Now, come on, somebody. He said, Father, if it, he said, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup. He's God said, no, I can't take it. I can't take it because you made a promise and we got a covenant. Come on. And guess what, y'all? He took every sin, all the sins of Pierre, all the sins of Wolf, all the sins of Thomas, all the sins of John, all the sins of Spence. Put your name, all your sins. And he says, he that knew no sin was made sin, which means that every sin of everybody at the time that Jesus died, God dumped every sin on Jesus. Therefore now, because my sins was placed on Jesus, I don't have to pay for them no more. If he died for my sins, why I'm going to die for him again? So all I need to do is claim what God has already given to me. And how do you get it? By faith. Say, God, I come today telling you I was one of them sinners. All my sin was on Jesus. Now I claim that he, he, he took my sins on the cross. I received my Savior. And guess what? I'm saved. Woo, glory to God. What kind of deal is that? I'm done. Uh, Pia, y'all come on, man. That's a good deal, man. That's a, and, and come on, you can't find a deal like that. All the lying I've done, all the illicit sexual activities I've done, and can I tell you what I did? With the drugs I sold, come on, y'all. I was even involved in a deal where a boy got killed because of the drugs. So God, you're saying that that's not going to be at my account no more. No, Charles, I took care of that too. Come on here, somebody. You mean to tell me you, you're going to take care of all the times when, when, when I, was, I was sneaking around? And yeah, Charles, I took care of that too. But God, what about next week? I took care of that too. Wait a minute, God, what about next year? I took care of that too. But God, what do I owe? You don't owe anything. You just, you just come. You just come. I've taken care of your bill. I, I've already paid for it. Everybody standing on your feet. Is there somebody here today? You've been wondering about that. You've been trying to, people been telling you, you need to do this to be saved, and you need to do that to be saved. And if you just live a good life and you stop smoking and drinking, if you can do all that, then you won't need Jesus. <laughs> Ain't nobody in this room was probably more jacked up than I was. Nobody in this room probably deserved hell like I did. But God. <laughs> I got two people in here. You were just as bad as I was. You know you was. You, you might as well give God a praise off and thank God for what he brought you through. Why don't you, won't you get your, uh, won't you get a swag wave with it and say, I am what I am by the grace of God. Now, I done got all sweaty, excited about this man, Jesus. If there's somebody here, don't you leave here today in all of your pride. Don't you leave here today and not sure whether or not that you're going to heaven or not. Those that are viewing us via the internet and you're sitting there in your jammies. And now you messed up. You don't went to the refrigerator and got two glasses of water. Come on back in and sit down. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want you to know you can do it today. You can write us at Antioch, NBC.org, or write us and tell us you gave your life to the Lord, and we'll find a church in your area. Or we'll come pick you up in the bus. No, not way in Minnesota we won't. I'm just saying we'll find somewhere for you. 
here, if there's somebody in this room that's never trusted Christ, I want you to come and do it today. And maybe somebody saved it. Know you're saved. Says, Pastor Jones, I believe. I believe that God is leading me to join this church. I want to partner with you, Pastor. I want to be a part of vision and where there's no resources because y'all heard Valerie read a few minutes ago that if God has given you a vision and you can afford it, it wasn't a vision at all. God only gives you a vision that you can't afford so he can get glory for it when he do it. Amen. So if there's somebody who's never trusted Christ, I want you to come. Maybe somebody says, Pastor, I'm saved and know I'm saved. Could you pray for me? Could you ask God to give me a spirit of evangelist that when I go somewhere, that I can tell people about the loving Christ. Whatever the needs are, I want you to come right now. Would you come? 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 He's coming back, y'all. He's coming back. I can almost, I can almost feel the wind slowly blowing. Jesus is coming back soon. Will we be here next Sunday? Will, if the rapture happened right now, and all of those that save, if the rapture happened right now, would you disappear because he's coming and he's going to take us in a moment in a twinkling of an eye? If it happened right now at this very moment, would you disappear too? Would you be gone? Or would you be still here having church? If there's a lady, a man here, I'm not trying to scare you, just trying to let you know that this thing is real and I believe every word of it. If you're here, never trusted Christ, and you'd like to do it today, would you come and do it today? Would you come and give your life to the Lord today? He says, Pastor, I'm serious today. I ain't fooling around no more. I'm going to give my life to the Lord. I've been playing around. I've been, been trying to make people think I'm saved, but I'm really not. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? then I'm going to assume, I'm going to make this assumption that everybody in here is saved. Is anybody here then, if you're saved, that you want to come and join this church? Is you want to be a part of this ministry? Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? And I'm going to make another assumption that you, if you don't belong to any out, you belong to some church. Well, can I pray for you? Look at me for one second. What is it that you're praying for? Who are you praying for? Is there somebody in your family that you want to be saved? Is there somebody that, that you've been struggling with? Is there somebody, is there something that you're struggling with something? The Bible says, he that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Do y'all have to, the reason, y'all came up for a reason. Everybody came here. You came here for something. I don't know what it is, but the Lord know what it is. Now, being that you're here, I need you to operate your faith. Can you believe God for it? Can you see yourself having it? Can you see it happening? I don't care what it looks like. I want you to believe God for it. You, can you believe that? Yes. Maybe somebody looked like they can't be saved, like they're knucklehead. That's okay. I'm one of them. Can I tell you, looking at somebody who mother told him to his face, you intend to kill yourself. But she said, I don't pray for you, boy, and I ain't going to let the devil have you. That was in the midst of me doing all kinds of stuff. And guess what, y'all? I'm saved. Not only did God save me, he got me preaching, y'all, on a woman who had a sixth grade education, but she knew the Lord. Come on, somebody. And she prayed me in. Can y'all do this with me? Father, in Jesus' name, I tried my best, God, to preach in such a way that, Lord, that I could connect to them. But God, with all of my preaching and everything that I say, Lord, it's not as effective as the Spirit of God taking what I've said and, Lord, and plunge it into the hearts of those that heard. Oh, Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, it is you that come to convict. It is you, Lord, that comes to make the Word of God real in the hearts of these. I have offered myself to you. And now, God, in Jesus' name, I would you take the words and take the message in which we've tried to preach and make it real to the hearts of these that are here. Lord, there's a lady that's standing around this altar She's been praying about something, hasn't been talking to anybody about it. She's been believing you for something. Maybe there's somebody around this altar that's going, going some stuff in their body. Father, in Jesus' name, could you give them a testimony right now? Because you can heal every sickness and every disease. When you died, Jesus, and gave yourself to death, even the death of a cross, God gave you a name that's high above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, I come against, Lord, that infirmity in the body of those that may be sick in this room. And we curse this infirmity in the name of Jesus. We curse every sickness and every disease in this room. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and we call you dead in the name of Jesus. God, send the spirit of healing in this room in the name of Jesus. God, rebuke the spirit of poverty like unbelief in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke the spirit of low self-esteem. We rebuke that spirit in Jesus.